Hi, this is Sadhana Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFI Insights. And today we have with us Masi Vartak, founder and CEO of Verta. Masi, first of all, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's a great pleasure. First of all, I'm curious about the name of the company, and then we can also talk about what does the company do, what problem you're trying to solve. But let's start with the name first. Yeah, um, interestingly, the name has nothing to do with my last name, uh, although they sound similar. So Verda comes from the root word, which is ver. Uh, it's down, it stands for truth. Uh, so if you think about Veritas, the Harvard motto. Um, so we want to get more reliability and trustworthiness within our ML models. And so that's where Verda comes from. So now let's talk about what do you guys do? We build infrastructure to help data science and ML teams build and ship models faster. So it's model management and operations. Um, we're moving into a world where all products are intelligent and we help teams build intelligent products faster. First, I want to talk a bit about ModelDB. What is it? What, what does it do? So if you think about a database, uh, a data management system, so DBMS, it ingests data, it lets you query data, it is a single system of truth for all the, mo all the data in your organization. ModelDB is similar, but for models. Um, it ingests models that have been built across a variety of ML systems, and ML is very unique in that uh, there's a lot of heterogeneity in the tooling. So one of the things that ModelDB does super well is it can ingest or kind of squeeze in models that have been built in R, in Python, in Java, you name it. Um, once the models are in ModelDB, you can keep track of metadata like who created them, what were the metrics uh, for the model, where should the model be used. You can add in a lot of governance and then connect it with the downstream systems that are going to package the model. They're going to run them, monitor them, do the whole DevOps workflow that we're so familiar with in software development. You mentioned DevOps, but I'm curious to know a bit about MLOps. Uh, what is MLOps and um, <laughs> are we going to add ops to everything? Should I start calling myself MediaOps? Well, actually there is a company, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's jokes apart. Yeah, tell us a bit about MLOps. Um, so definitely, I think MLOps derives a lot from DevOps. If you think about DevOps, we have the developers who are building um, the software components. We have operators who are actually responsible for running these components in production, making sure they are high quality, their performance um, and the monitoring really is in line with what you expect. Now, if we take the dev out of that and we replace that with ML, we're talking about building these models. It actually turns out that there's a very different kind of user who's building these models. These are the data scientists. So on the ML side of the ML and ops, the infinite loop, if you're familiar with it, um, on the ML side, we're building a lot of these models. There's different kinds of people building them. The workflows, the tooling, and the people. So like people, process, and tools are very different for ML ops than are with DevOps. But the idea and the motivation is still the same, which is we want to ship models faster and more reliably. And we found that there are slight distinctions between how ML ops um, and DevOps compare. So quickly, they're, you're talking about data scientists, different persona. Second is heterogeneity that we talked about before. You can have models built in a variety of systems that you want to deploy in the same manner. There are challenges that come with scale. So for a lot of banks, insurance companies, they have thousands of models uh, running around. And essentially, they want a central place to keep track of where is the model deployed? Is it being used in a way that is on label? So as they expected, otherwise there's going to be a lot of regulatory scrutiny. And the third one is uh, we need robust infra along with operational expertise to actually run them. So with those things, uh, with those four areas, we can contrast ML ops from traditional DevOps. Right, uh, but one thing, this is just a, a more or less like not a technical question, but a curiosity question. When you look at DevOps, you know, we talk about the dev side and operation side. When you talk about MLOps, uh, so are we totally removing the devs part of it or should it be dev MLOps just the way we see it in DevSecOps? Um, I think that's a great question. 
even with ML, there are still three constituents that end up being involved. There's the data scientists who are building the models. A lot of times there's also software engineers who are involved in building the scaffolding around the model because the model is one piece. You still need the data pipelines that are going to get you the data. There might be other code that is being called and then operators. So ML DevOps would be also appropriate. We kind of shorten it to ML Ops uh, to get everyone on board. When we look at uh, you know AI ML, I also come from you know science fiction background, so we think about it you know in that terms. But um, realistically, uh, what are the what are the areas industries where AI ML? Uh, First of all, just like Kubernetes or any other cloud native technology or containers, you know, we see suddenly everybody wants to embrace it because it's the next shiny object. Same is happening with AI ML these days. But what are the industries where you are seeing real, you know, advantages that you see? I mean, of course, anybody can use it, right? Uh, my door sensor can also use it, and of course, Tesla can also use it. But I want to know from you, if you cannot, what are the areas where you see that AI ML is really going to transform those industries and it's going to play a critical role? Right. Um, so I actually think it's going to be everywhere. Um, and that's because any software, any piece of software can be made more intelligent. Um, you talked about your doorbell sensor. It's using pretty, let's call it pretty well understood algorithms to understand who's approaching the door. Is it a person? Is it um, an animal? And you can take the right actions accordingly. What we found that was pretty interesting uh, once um, once we started building out the Verda platform was the variety of use cases that people have for AI and ML. For instance, one of our partners um, uses AI and ML to find better leads for their customers. So they are scraping the web, they are classifying web pages into different categories and helping you find people who look more like your customers. We're seeing this in healthcare where you can find better medicines. We're seeing this in autonomous vehicles really across the board. So I'm a big believer that in the next 10 years or so, every product that we're used to today, whether it's in the home, the outside environment, in the corporate world, is all going to be AI based. And interestingly, the banks and insurance companies have been doing this for a while. Um, and so we see a lot of uptake from these more regulated industries because they've been doing data science, doing credit risk models, fraud models for a very long time. So if I'm not wrong, it, it seems more or less like just the way at some point we used to talk about digital transformation or we used to say that, you know, uh, every company should be a software company. So today, Every company should have AI ML as a piece of their digital transformation journey. Without that, uh, their journey is in the company. So what I'm trying to say is that it seems like AI ML is going to be a critical piece of your software stack, just the way software has become a critical piece of your business. 100%. We're big believers in that, um, whether it was the transition to uh, web technologies, mobile technologies. We think that ML is kind of the third wave. Um, and we're seeing that across the board, like even from the smallest companies to the largest companies, and every industry is going to have to grapple with how do we most effectively use AI and ML? Um, how do we get it into our products? And then, of course, layer in the governance too, which is becoming very critical these days. Awesome. Now, so, for, so far, we talked about technologies, we talked about ecosystem, we talked about the problem you're trying to solve. Now, what I want to understand is that how is your company, Verta, uh, taking all these this work and offering as a solution to your users or customers? Got it. Um, in terms of the shape of the product, did I, if I understood that correctly? I mean, these products are all great, but when people start using them, they need support, they need additional features, they need functionalities. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, so we are fairly unique in that we have an open source offering and we have an enterprise offering. So that um, that incorporates some interesting dynamics into how we do product development. So for us, broadly, we have our software is fairly modular. There's a piece that really works with the data science workflows. A lot of it is open source and comes from the core model TV component. Once we have a model in the system, we're packaging it, we're deploying it, and then we're making sure that the model works um, in real time as effectively as possible. 
So that's the software pieces. Um, there are takes, there's a lot of other components to making an AI or ML initiative successful. And in our case, we actually become the support team that is keeping the system operational. So we work with a very well-known workplace collaboration company right now. And effectively, all of their models are being hosted on the Verda platform. We're on call in case uh, something goes off with a model. Uh, we're in the system helping debug, provide fixes, patches, and so on. Um, and where our open source really comes in is that a lot of these components have been battle tested by our open source users. And so that gives us a lot of confidence when we're rolling it out at large scale as we did uh, for the collaboration company. What kind of community is around your open source uh, project? So ModelDB is the place where kind of everything starts. Uh, you keep track of your models, and then you can do the downstream operations. So a lot of data scientists, whether they are individual users, um, like grad students, as I was, uh, research labs, whether it's our larger customers who are enterprises that are using ModelDB to manage their models, there is a ton of heterogeneity that we see even in the user base. Um, and as ML is getting more democratized or just easier for folks to use, we're seeing the uptake for model DB just continue to increase. Mansi, thank you so much, not only for explaining uh, Verta, uh, but also DevOps and MLOps, and also the whole community that you're building around uh, the model DB project. Uh, that's a great project and I, I would keep an eye on it, but I also want to talk to you again. So let's you know, catch up again. Thank you once again. It sounds great. Thank you so much for having me. It was a real pleasure.